About two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I made a video on my journaling routine and tips for how to get started with journaling. And that video did pretty well. So I decided to make an updated version of that video today because my journaling routine has changed a little bit since that video. Journaling has been such a integral part of my sobriety journey, not only my sobriety journey, but my mental health journey and just my life. I started journaling in 2019 or 2018, and I remember why. Let me get, let me get my very first journal and read to you the first passage. July of 2019 is when I started journaling. I'm going to expose myself here. It's a few weeks into summer and I'm feeling good. I want this to be a summer of improvement for me, which is why I wanted to start journaling. I'm not exactly sure on everything in my life that needs improving, but so far this summer has brought two major things to my attention. One, I need to chill with the alcohol. And two, I need to be more confident in myself and believe that people will like me for who I am. And then I just, you know, go into all this. So specifically, like I remember starting journaling because I was just struggling with alcohol. If you're new to this channel, I got sober when I was 21 and journaling has just been a huge part of my sobriety journey since then. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my updated journaling routine and then also give some tips and tricks on just journaling in general. And if you're new to journaling, how to start journaling. To start off with the basics, what kind of journal do I even use? You know, you can journal in anything. You can journal in your phone. You can journal, journal with like your voice memos. That's something that I used to do a lot was like literally just record myself and my thoughts talking into my phone. That was like a form of journaling, I would say. So it doesn't have to be pen and paper, but that's what I find is most therapeutic to me. These are the journals I started out with. Spiral Bound. These are from Target, $6. And then I recently upgraded to this kind of journal just because the spiral was getting annoying to like store because I have like four or five of these that are filled up and when I stack them, the spirals get like stuck together. So I upgraded to like these kinds. This is a moleskin journal. It's dotted. It has dots instead of lines. I switch it up between the two. Lately, I've been really into the dotted journals. So in a perfect world, I would love to have moleskin journals for all of my journals because they're just great quality. They feel good. They're like flexible. This one's more hardcover, but these are like 20 to $25 a pop. I found this alternative on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's the Paperage and it feels pretty similar, like, you know, good quality. Um, it's just more like harder cover than the moleskin, which is like more flexible. But those are the three types of journals for different price ranges that I enjoy. Now, to be clear, that is only for a certain part of my journaling routine. There are also journals that come with prompts in them, which are another part of my journaling routine, but we'll get to that in a second. Don't be overwhelmed by all these books. I know how they can feel overwhelming. I don't use all of these. I'm just showing you different options. I like journaling in the morning and then right before I go to bed. I use the morning to get out any thoughts that I may have collected while sleeping or that, I, that are going through my mind in the morning. I also use it to kind of start the day with a clean slate. So I'll journal just to get all my thoughts out and then I feel lighter and like I can just take on my day. So I love to do it in the morning. And then the evening I like to use as a time for reflection, but we'll start with the morning. <sighs> Sorry if I just made you yawn. So in the morning I sit at my little desk here and I do a couple of different things. First, I will use my standard journal and then I will use my one line a day journal. These are the only two journals that I'm really using right now besides the Rupee Cora journal, which I'll talk about later. This part I'll go through rather quickly because it's kind of standard. I'm sure if you've watched any sort of journaling video or seen anyone talk about journaling, you're probably getting tired of the three things you're grateful for, three affirmations, all of that. But I do do that because that stuff does work. But I'll go through this quickly. So first I write down Every morning, three things I'm grateful for. Practicing gratitude is a great way to attract more opportunities, more abundance into your life and just appreciate what you have. Then I'll write down one to two intentions for the day. So how do I want to feel at the end of the day? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do? I'm not really strict on what type of or what type of intentions they are. They're just whatever I intend to do that day. One to three affirmations. If you're new to using affirmations, it can sometimes be confusing like where to find them. 
I always find like my greatest affirmations by doing a Google search. So affirmations for when I'm feeling behind in life, affirmations for when I'm feeling overwhelmed and affirmations are just things that you want to believe about yourself or things that you do believe about yourself, but you just want to solidify in your mind. There's this great creator, her name's Alexis Barber. She posts affirmations on her Instagram story every day. So I'll just look at those and like repeat those to myself. Sometimes I'll write them down. She also just started like a texting thing where you can, she can text you every morning with the affirmation if you want to stay off social media. So I'll put that link down below. So three gratefuls, one to two intentions, one to three affirmations. It's not strict. It's whatever I'm feeling that day. And then my stream of consciousness writing, my free writing, my brain dump, my morning pages, whatever you want to call it. I don't put a time limit. I feel like the time limit stresses me out. It can be good if you're just getting started to like force yourself to write for a certain amount of time, but I just write for you know however long until it takes my thoughts to get out of my head and onto the paper. So I just started the Rupi Kaur healing through words and she writes about free writing and her explanation of free writing is a perfect example of what I do when I say I write like how I'm feeling or my thoughts so hopefully this can help. I took up writing during a difficult time in my life. I would set a timer, put my pen to paper, and write the first thing that came to mind. I would pour my heart out into my journal and it would bring my mind to ease. This form of free writing helped me start my journey toward healing. Free writing, often referred to as stream of consciousness writing, is a form of deep listening where you let your thoughts flow out onto paper in real time. You're not worried about the quality of the writing. Your only goal is to write without inhibitions. As you're free writing in this journal, don't erase or cross anything out. Don't overthink it. Just keep writing until it feels like you've said it all. So hopefully that is inspiring and helpful for getting started with the free writing that people always tend to think of when they think of journaling. And yeah, that is what I do in this journal every morning. And then after I do my free writing, I have started reading in the mornings because I really want to incorporate more reading into my life and the ways that I'm doing that, the way that I found works best for me is I really like to read personal development books and books where I'm learning something, but I can't do it at night. I need to read like novels and stories at night. And then the morning when I have like full juices, full concentration is when I can read stuff that I'm trying to learn about. So I'll usually read for like 10 minutes before or in the middle of or after I journal. And then if there's something that I wanna jot down in my journal about what I just read, I'll do that. I then go to my one line a day journal. This is the same that I used in my original video. I did not think I would like this as much as I did, but I love the little routine of this. Essentially each day has a few lines and then it has sections for five years. So each day when I flip this open, I see what I did that day a year ago and it's nice to uh, like reflect on that day a year ago and then also like write down what I did today so that I can reflect on it next year and then obviously next year I'll get to reflect on two years of things that I did. I'll link some of these down below. They have a lot of different colors and designs and stuff. So those are kind of my favorite journaling exercises to do every day. Next, I'll talk about some specific journal exercises that I do when I want to work through certain feelings that I'm having. Another thing I sometimes do when I'm feeling overwhelmed, because I find that journaling really helps when I'm feeling overwhelmed, is I do this exercise where I turn my journal to the side. So I like turn it horizontally and on one side, I'll write, I'm overwhelmed right now because, and on the other side, I'll write either a solution to why I'm feeling overwhelmed or how I can reframe that thing that I'm feeling overwhelmed about. And it really helps me to write out everything that I'm overwhelmed about, because if I can see it and I can try and work it out on paper, it helps a lot. Another thing that can help with feeling overwhelmed or anxiety or like things that you have to do is one that my ED recovery coach taught me, which is the eliminate, delegate, reframe, procrastinate exercise. So basically what you do is you write down everything that's currently overwhelming you or causing you stress, whether it's what you have to do that day or what you have to do that week or just anything currently happening in your life. Then you look at each thing and you either eliminate it. So can you get rid of it? Can you eliminate it from your life even for the time being? You delegate it. Can you pass it off to someone else? If it's something at work, can you pass this off to someone who has maybe a bit lighter of a load on their plate. Can you procrastinate it? And this is not like just not doing it. This is like purposeful procrastination. So like leaving the thing until another day. Does it have to be done right now? If it doesn't, procrastinate it purposely. If you can't eliminate, delegate it, or procrastinate it, can you reframe it? Can you look at something and think, how can I change my mindset about this thing and just make it 
something that I can cope with and handle. Lastly, if I'm really not feeling inspired, like I don't know what to write, I don't wanna do an exercise, but I know I should journal and get some thoughts out, I will follow journaling prompts. And these you can find everywhere. Pinterest, I have an entire board of journaling prompts that I come across and I save there. People on Instagram post journal prompts a lot. Study Sunday, I've also started posting journal prompts on there. Not every Monday, but like every, maybe it's been every Monday. I've only posted it twice, but I'm gonna start posting journaling prompts there. So I'll leave the Study Sunday Instagram down below. Now, if you don't wanna look at your phone for these prompts or look at social media for these prompts, one tip for if you're a journaling beginner, I was going to say this till the end, but it makes more sense to include it now. You can buy journals that come pre-filled with prompts. So for example, this is what I used to use. This is a five minute journal. This really blew up, I feel like, because of TikTok or just recently I've seen it everywhere, but it has all of these pre-filled prompts in it. So I'm grateful for what would make today great, daily affirmations. I also recently got this journal for a birthday gift. This is Rupi Kaur. She is the lovely poet called Healing Through Words. And it has just like, this is a thick book. This is almost 300 pages of journal prompts. And the pages are huge. There's a lot of space. So just look online because there are so many more than just these ones. But that's what I do in the mornings. It's the evening time now. Feels like it's 9 p.m. But it's only 6.30. It's just pitch black outside. I am going to take some time to journal. I never used to journal in the evenings. I used to only journal in the mornings and kick my day off, you know, with a great start. And then I kind of started realizing, well, why am I not doing that in the evening? Because my evenings, I definitely find it hard to relax. And so I often felt like my evenings were scattered and frazzled. And I was like, well, what do I usually do when I feel scattered and frazzled, especially in the morning? I journal. So why am I not journaling in the evening? And I also started to like really think about the importance of reflecting on your day because I'm definitely guilty of, and I think a lot of us are guilty of just being so busy throughout the day, having so many things to do, just going through them one by one. So much so that we never give ourselves like any time to just think and reflect on what happened like the last hour, let alone the last day, let alone the last week. And when I find that I feel like life is going too fast, you know, when you just feel like, oh, how is it already this next month? Or how is it already, you know, Monday again? I usually find when I'm feeling that way, it's because I haven't been taking the time to reflect on the past days, the past weeks, and so incorporating journaling into my evening routine has been great. One tip for this is to just make it work for you. Like I used to say, okay, I'm gonna journal right before bed, but then I would never do it because I'd be so tired. So I started journaling like right either at the end of when I'm like right finishing, like finishing up work or after I've done like my evening walk. So before I'm making dinner, before I'm getting like into full relaxation mode, I'll journal so that all the thoughts are fresh. I can reflect on the day. I can think about the day. And then once I'm done journaling, I know, okay, this day is done. Now you can relax. The one way that I do that is, you know, I can, I've been doing it in my, you know, standard journal, just like writing some couple things that happened during the day. What went well? What didn't go well? What gave me energy today? What drained my energy? What would I like to focus more on? And all these prompts I found literally by Googling prompts for reflection. Just, it really allows you to see your progress. I feel like when you spend more time reflecting on your life and the things you're doing rather than just like moving through life and not giving, you know, your previous day or your previous weeks a second thought. Some tips that have helped me really fall in love with journaling. First, like I said, start with prompted journals if you feel like that's something that's gonna help you. Another tip is to get journals and pens that you're excited about, whether it's a fun color, a fun pattern, you know, it feels nice, whatever. I've also been seeing on Pinterest people making like little collages in their journal. So journaling doesn't have to be just writing out things. I've just been seeing people like cutting and pasting photos, writing things about the photos, putting stickers, using different colored pens. So if that's what's gonna get you excited about journaling, then you do you. Kind of going off of that, setting the scene to making your journaling enjoyable. So when I get up after I drink my lemon water and make my cup of tea, I'll put my tea down, I'll light a candle, and I'll put on this YouTube video that I've been listening to. I'll link it down below. It's like a attraction affirmation sound. It's kind of like binaural beats. It's just a very soothing sound. So once I have the candle on and I have that going, I'm just ready and I have my tea next to me. I'm ready to sit down and just journal. Lastly, 
building if you really want to get serious about journaling and it's something that you really want to build into your routine build it into your routine to make it a habit of course in the beginning it's going to be a challenge to start putting journaling into your routine because you're not used to it but once you have put it into your routine and it becomes a habit it's something that you're going to do without thinking like now i know when i wake up on the weekdays journaling is immediately what i do like it's not like i'm wagering oh what should i do that's just what i do but that's taken a lot of time of me doing it to now have it be part of my routine so if you want to make it part of your routine you can always use habit stacking habit stacking is where you pair one habit that you want with one habit that you actually do say every morning you wake up and you make a cup of coffee you can pair journaling with that cup of coffee so while the coffee's brewing i will journal and because you already make the coffee every day it'll be easy to attach the journaling to that i've also found that instead of focusing on like oh i have to journal and i have to do exactly everything that i just mentioned in this video you can focus on just being consistent if you just want to write one line or two lines in your journal each day but you do it five six seven days a week once you get into that consistent flow then it will just be about like not breaking your streak of being consistent rather than journaling everything all the time like i don't journal all this stuff all the time sometimes there's just a day when i will write one affirmation and then i'll be done because i have other things to do that being said there are periods in my life where i feel like i need journaling a bit more lately i've been really into journaling because i just started therapy so i've been really into journaling in the morning and then also after like my weekly therapy appointment and then once i think about things that i want to talk about in ther therapy i'll write them down in my journal so right now feels like a very journaling heavy situation for me same when I'm like going through something specific, it usually ends up being a journaling heavy time in my life. But sometimes there's times when I'm not so focused on journaling and it's not a big part of my life. You just have to figure out what's going to work for you. I think that about sums it up. Like I said, journaling has just been such an integral part of my growth journey over the past few years. So that's why I thought this video would be a good idea. That's why I also thought that offering a journaling workshop through the Steady Sunday Squad would be a good idea. So if you would like to join us, you can sign up for the Steady Sunday Squad. And on November 13th at 1130 a.m. PST, we will have a journaling workshop. This will just be a place for everyone to come together, whether you have journaled before or you haven't. And we'll just share our favorite journaling techniques, share how we get, get got started with journaling, give some of our favorite tips and just share information about how journaling works for us. And then since it's, it'll be like a live workshop, a live discussion, you can ask any questions you want to anyone else about how they got started with journaling or their favorite journaling practices. And hopefully it'll just be a cute little community event where we can all grow in our own journaling journeys together. So I'll leave that information down below. You just have to sign up for the Steady Sunday Squad and then you can join us there. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I believe in you. If you have any questions, you can DM me, you can leave them in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Happy journal.